Hi everyone, I'm Kenta from American Hako, and here we are for another episode of Eye on Hako. For today's webinar, we'll be going over the FT802 Thermal Wire Stripper. Now the Thermal Wire Stripper, it's a unique product. We're, Hako is known for soldering, desoldering, rework, hot air rework, fume extractors, but we also carry the thermal wire stripper called the FT802. It's a unique product used in industries such as military, defense, space, aerospace, and medical industries where our customers cannot afford to damage the inside, inner conductors or inner wires, the strands that are underneath the insulation when they're stripping off the wire. Now, thermal wire, wire strippers, um, compared to a conventional wire stripper, this is a conventional wire stripper that I have here. This is one of our CHP brand CSP-30-2 conventional type wire stripper. These conventional type wire strippers, what they do, as you, as we all know, is they're blades, they're shears that cut into the insulation. And as you're cutting into the insulation, you remove the insulation off of the cables. And when you're using these thermal wire strippers, don't get me wrong, these work great by the way, but when you're using these conventional type of thermal wire strippers, there is the, the, the chance that you might end up nicking the inner strands or the inner conductor wires of your cables. Now the companies or customers that work in the previously mentioned industries, they cannot afford to do so. So on their specific applications, it is called out that they cannot use mechanical wire strippers. So what do they use instead? They use thermal wire strippers. Because what happens when you end up damaging one of the inner conductors or wires? The final product, if the wires are damaged, it may end up compromising the final integrity of the final product. So these companies, they make products that are shot up in space like satellites or missiles or spaceships. They just can't have that risk of something failing on their final product. Because when the conductors or the wires get damaged, later on down the road, the signals, the currents or the signals that are passing through these conductors may not function 100% properly if the strands or conductors end up becoming damaged. So they cannot use mechanical wire strippers. They use our FT802 thermal wire strippers. Thermal wire strippers, instead of cutting the insulation, it actually melts the insulation and you gently remove, separate the insulation and from there you separate and remove the insulation off the cable. I'll get into a quick demonstration of that here really quick. But before we get into that, let's go over the actual FT802 thermal wire stripper. The FT802, it's not the very first thermal wire stripper that we've made here at Hako. We first came out with the FT800. That evolved into the FT801. The FT801 was a great product for most people and most applications. However, there was still room for improvement when you're talking about alignment and heat transfer. So we received all that feedback from our customers, from the market, dumped it into the development process, and the FT801 evolved into the FT802, which is what we have here today. It's our latest and greatest thermal wire stripper, FT802, okay? So what makes the FT802 that much greater than the FT800 or the FT801? There's a several different things. There's a lot of things that our engineers put a lot of work into to make the FT802 such a great tool to use. I can't give out all the trade secrets here today, but I will share with you a couple improvement points that the engineers, our engineers made. And one of them is in the handpiece and the other one is on the actual blade. Now let's start off by going over the improvements on the handpiece. I have here with me the handpiece FT8002. This is the 8002. This is the handpiece that was used on the FT801 thermal wire stripper. Okay. Now this is the new design FT8004 handpiece that's used on the FT802 station. As you can see, completely redesigned handpiece, okay? Now what's the improvement? 
the big improvement I'll show you here is that as you can see here, this is actually a tweezer running along the inside of the handpiece. It's a tweezer constructed as a backbone or a kind of like a foundation for the handpiece of the new FT8004 handpiece. And what that allowed us to do was by using the tweezer as its construction, it drastically improves the alignment when you squeeze in the handpiece like so. So that's one big improvement we made to the handpiece, the tweezer construction. The other part of it is in the actual blades of the G4, new style of blades called G4 series of blades. Let me go back and show you what the old version looked like, right? This is the old version, G2 style blades. The heaters ran along the sides right here of the enclosure pipe. So it was a little bit further back from the actual contact surface of where you want to cut and strip away the insulation, okay? So we recognize that or our engineers recognize that. And for the new G4 blades, we move the position of the heater. And here we are, this is the new FT8004 handpiece, new G4 blades. And with the new blades, let me get, see if I can get, it. there you go. The heaters are actually closer. We've changed the position, location of the heaters. So they're now located a lot closer to the cutting surface. So they're low, the heaters are here. Let me try to get that good area. Heaters are located here, cutting surface is here. So the heaters are much more closer to the cut surface. So what does that mean? That means better heat transfer, which resulted in a cleaner cut of the actual insulation. There's also other additional benefits that we put in, like we put in these set screws located one here and one here, one on each side, the left side and the right side. And now what that set screw acts as is once you put in the blades, those set screws obviously act as a uh, secure point for the blades themselves. But by using the set screw, what you'll actually be able to do is when you're squeezing in the blade and you can get it, you can make the final, just the final tweak or the final adjustment. So the, and then tighten down both set screws so that the alignment on the blades are just perfect kind of like what you see there you see how the circles are all perfectly lined up together that is possible because of the new tweezer construction the new improved con design of the blades and by using those set screws those are some of the major improvements that allowed us to improve the performance of the blade, which results in a cleaner cut of the insulation when you're using these tools. Now there's other improvements we made to the station, like there's a built-in ha uh, handpiece holder, like you see here, this is actually acts as a handpiece holder. So when you're done stripping the wire, you simply place the handpiece on the holder and it acts as a handpiece holder. There's also a blade removal plate here, which you can use when you pull up to remove your G4, hot G4 blades. There's also a few slots in the back of the station here that you can use as blade holders. And as you can see, there's a couple slots for tool placement. The station is easy to carry, right? And there's also, once you get into the system parameters, there's also our standard features such as auto sleep, auto shut off, password lockouts. Those all come standard on the FT802. Now, as far as the specs, for example, the settings are concerned, you can still set the settings anywhere from 5% all the way up to 100%, just like you were allowed to on the FT-801. But we did make a minor tweak on the FT-802, where you, if you go into the system parameters, you can actually increase the maximum allowable setting from 100, 100% all the way up to 120%. That was, not, that was not something that was available on the FT-801, so it's an added feature on the FT-802. Um, it's also ESD safe, the handpiece are ESD safe, so you don't have to worry about ESD shock. 
And let's get into, now let's get into the actual blades. I mentioned the improvement to the blades themselves, the new closer position, location of the heaters to the contact surface, of the cut surface. We still have three types of blades available in the new G4 series of blades. We have the straight blade, which is called the G4-1601. Then we have the G4-1602, which will allow you to strip off material when you're using 18 to 28 gauge wire. And then the G4-1603 for when you want to strip off insulation on 26 to 38 gauge wire. Now that 38 gauge wire capability, that was not possible with our old FT801 and G2 blades. So that, again, that's another added benefit, another added feature that you will get with the FT802 and with the new and improved G4 series of blades. So we went over the specs, we went over the, some of the basic features and benefits, uh, went over the G4 blades. Now I'm going to get into a quick demonstration of how to, the proper technique when using these thermal wire shimmers. But really quick, before we get into the demonstration, there's a couple things that you will need to know that are necessary to know when you want to strip off insulation. One is you need to know the gauge wire. And two, you need to know the material of the insulation that you're working with. For example, if you have a cable or wire that is 18 gauge wire, you have to select the proper blade that has the proper notch, the 18 gauge notch, so you can use it on the, to remove the 18 gauge wire insulation. So in our case, the G4-1602 will work because it allows you to work anywhere from 18 to 28 gauge wire. So that's what I have set on my handpiece here today. The next step is to know the insulation, the material of the insulation, because not all materials are made equally. For example, PVC or nylon, those are much more easier to melt away and strip away compared to other materials such as Teflon, for example. They are much, much more harder to um, strip away and melt away. And depending on the, the material of the insulation, you need to go ahead and change the settings on your station itself, okay? So again, it's important to know the material of your insulation. Now, you may have a question. Okay, now I know the material. How do I know what settings I should set on the actual station? Well, to get everyone started off with, with every thermal wire stripper station, Hako has included this reference chart for you to get started off with. And on this reference chart, you'll find a variety of different materials, such as PVC, like I mentioned previously. PVC, we recommend you get started off with a setting of 10. For nylon, we recommend a setting of 20. And for Teflon, we recommend a setting of 55. Now just please understand that these are all reference charts and actually depending on the actual cable or the actual application that you're working with, you may need to adjust those settings a little bit, okay? So for example, let's turn on the station here and I have with me here a couple different, you know, samples with me but this is a Teflon material, but inside of the Teflon material, there's also a Kapton tape wrapped around inside. So what I had to do was I had to increase the setting from the recommended, from the recommended 55 to all the way up to 85. So I wanna make changes to the setting. How do I do that? It's really simple. All you have to do is press and hold any one of these three buttons. Okay, right now, so I'm gonna press and hold the up button. Now you see that the display is flashing now and you're ready to make your changes. So from here, I wanna increase from 20 all the way up to 85. So I'm gonna press the up button several times until I get to 85. Once I get to 85, I'm going to press enter one time 
and that's it. I made changes to my settings. And while the display is flashing like that, that means the station is trying to reach its set temperature or to its settings. So I'm gonna wait till the flashing goes away. Okay, there it is. Now the 85 is a solid 85. Now I'm ready to strip some insulation off of these cables. Now, I'm going to demonstrate two methods. One is the not recommended, the improper way to do it, which I still see many people do out there in the field, okay? And that is, I see a lot of people once you've selected the proper notch, they will score and they'll just rip the insulation off of the, off of the cable. Now that's not recommended, right? I'll show you once again. What they do is once they score the insulation, Gently, they'll go ahead and rip it. That is not the right way to do it. Because what you're doing is when you grip and when you rip like that, what you're doing is you actually have the danger of scraping the inner strands or the conductors that are inside with the edges of the blades themselves. And when you do that, you're actually damaging the inner conductors, which eliminates the entire purpose of using the thermal wire strippers. So instead, here, now I'm going to show you the proper technique when using thermal wire strippers. And here we go. Again, select the proper notch. What you want to do is gently score the insulation, and then you want to gently just slightly peel back till you get that. You see that separation that I have here? That's what you want. You get that separation. That's all you need. And from there, use your fingers you can use your fingers to twist and gently remove the insulation off of your cable and wires. Okay. Again, I can use a separate gauge wire. Here I have a little bit thicker wire. You see there, this is about a 26 or sorry, uh, 18. So 20 gauge wire. Oh, here you go. And then I'm going to use the proper notch. Get that in place. Score it gently. And then what you want to do is re slightly remove. What you don't want to do again is you don't want to pull like that. Again, that's damaging the conductors, okay? The proper technique to use, again, I'm gonna show you again. Find the correct notch. Gently squeeze so that you're gently scoring the insulation and once you scored it slightly separate it like that so you get that separation that's all you need and from here you gently twist and pull back on the insulation till you get it off that's the proper technique when using thermal wire strippers now after you're done using these tools from time to time after usage, you may find some of the material from the insulation may get stuck onto the surface of the blades, okay? In that case, no need to worry. You can use a tool such as our FT700. Now our FT700, this is a standard tool we recommend our, to our customers to, to polish your soldering iron tips. The brass brushes, the rotating brass brushes that are rotating inside. It's made of a softer material than what the material is on the surface of our soldering irons, so it's safe to use. Same thing with the surface of, the, uh, of, the, of our G4 blades as well. The brass material is softer than the G4 blades themselves, so it's safe to use, no problem. So if you do get any sort of insulation that is stuck onto the surface of the blades, simply turn the FT700 on and Insert it for a couple seconds, remove, maybe repeat that a couple times, and then you'll be able to remove any sort of insulation that may be stuck on the, on the surface of the blades themselves. Okay, 
And now after you're done using the handpiece, you can put it on the holder. And as soon as I put the station on the holder, you can see that the display says SLP, that means sleep. The station has now entered into sleep mode because I'm not using the handpiece at the current moment. When it's time to replace your blades, you can use the blade removal tool. First, turn off your station and you're gonna to need to remove these two hex screws, one on the left and one on the right. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. Once you've carefully removed those hex screws, you can use the blade removal plate. Insert the blades into the plate. And what you wanna do at this point is you don't wanna pull backwards, you wanna pull up. Don't pull backwards, pull up. Pull up on the handpiece and you'll be able to remove hot even while the blades are still hot, okay? So no more need to use a heat resistant pad anymore when you want to remove your blades. And after you move them, you can hold them down by the socket here and use the, uh, the holder, the blade holders that are located in the back of the station like so. There you go. Now we do also carry a uh, accessory called the FT8003. It's a hot knife blade that you, you can also um, plug into the FT802 and use it to um, cut and strip away uh, larger cables. You can, there's also, there's two different types of blades available for the FT8003. So those of you who are working with larger cables that need to cut away larger cables, make sure you check that out as well. What else, what else? We went over the product, we went over the specs, we went over the features, we went over the blades, we even went over the proper technique to remove. Again, I'm gonna reiterate this one more time. Do not grip and rip, because that can damage your wires. The proper technique, again, is to use the heat to melt the insulation, get that little bit of separation. And then from there, once you separated the insulation, use your fingers to gently twist and pull back on the insulation till the insulation is completely removed from the cable. That's the proper technique. Make sure you guys remember that, okay? Um, overall, FT802, a great tool for those of you who cannot use mechanical wire strippers and need an alternative way to strip uh, cables and wires. The FT802 is a great thermal wire stripper for you to use in your facility. If you ever need a demo, or if you're interested in a demo of our FT802 thermal wire stripper, you can reach out to us at support at hakousa.com or feel free to give us a call at 1-800-88-HAKO and we'll get you in touch with a local sales rep in your area. That's it for today's show. Thank you all for watching and we'll see you next time.